Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And let's go ahead and figure out this math question here. So it says, how many degrees are there between 1.30 uh, p.m. and 11 p.m.? And just to kind of make this extra clear, you want to kind of think of this in terms of a nice little round circular uh, clock face, okay? So if you weren't thinking of those terms, think in terms of a nice circular uh, clock face uh, to kind of model what's going on here. But uh, if you think you can figure out this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link uh, to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so how many degrees between 1.30 p.m. and 11 p.m.? Of course, our answer is going to be in degrees. So let's go and take a look at the answer right now. It is 285 degrees. Now, there's a couple different ways you can reason through this problem. So if you did it, um, if you got the right answer, but you did it differently or you thought about it differently than the way I did it, that's perfectly fine as long as you understood what you were doing. But if you did get this right answer, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you solved a pretty cool math question today. I'm pretty sure they'll be very impressed. They're like, wow, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So again, the answer is 285 degrees. So we're going to have to know something about degrees. And let's go ahead and uh, kind of model the situation. Again, I kind of told you, uh, think of a circular uh, clock face. So old school clock, what do we have here? Well, you know, most of our clocks are digital these days, right? And you look on your cell phone, you just see the time. You know, I remember way back in elementary school, I guess they probably do this uh, uh, in elementary school, you know, first grade, second grade, and whatever they do this, they teach you how to read a clock. But basically, a basic face of a clock is what? Right here, we got you know, 12 up here, right? Then 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you you know you have to have some basic understanding of a clock face. So and you also have to have an understanding of how many degrees there are in a circle. Okay, so one revolution around a circle is what? Well, it's 360 degrees. Okay, so hopefully you knew that. And if you go halfway around a circle, it would be half of that. That would be 180 degrees. And if you go a quarter away around a circle, that would be a half of 180 or 90 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we can kind of um, start this problem. Now, this is the way I'm approaching a problem. Uh, you, again, you might have taken a different uh, approach, but basically you're going to have to figure out the same kind of information. Okay, so you can model this a little bit differently or think of it a little bit differently. Again, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so for me, I'm going to be like, all right, uh, we have 12 hours in our clock face. It would be good to know how many degrees are for every hour. So I could simply just take 360 degrees and divide it by how many hours there are in my nice little uh, clock face here. There's 12 hours. So uh, 360 divided by 12 is 30 degrees. So every hour, okay, right here is 30 degrees. So let's just make sure that makes sense. So this would be 30, this is another 30, that's 60, and another 30 right here. That's um, 30, 30, 30, that's 90. So yes, that's uh, correct. And then 90, and then another 90 right here is 180. Then we have 270, and then finally we have 360. But the main idea is, hey, we have 30 degrees displacement uh, for every hour we go on our little clock here. So if every hour is displacing 30 degrees, okay, uh, every half hour, i.e. 30 minutes, because we're going to have to deal with 30 minutes because our time and our problem is 130, right? So we have 30 minutes involved. So if every hour is 30 degrees, well, a half hour would just be half of that would be 15 degrees. So this kind of uh, sets up our little conversion right here between hours and degrees. So now we just have to kind of reason through this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next step. So we, again, we want to figure out how many degrees are between 1.30 and 11 p.m. Let's go ahead and just make this nice and simple here for a second. Let's just uh, figure out between 1 p.m. and 11 p.m. We'll get to this 30 degrees here in a second. 
uh, how many uh, degrees is that? Well, here's one and here's 11. So how many hours is that? Okay, well, that's 10 hours or one minus 11, but you can just kind of see here, we have two hours between 11 and one. We have 12 hours total. So again, uh, pretty, uh, you know, uh, you know, obvious, hopefully to you, that there are 10 hours between 1 p.m. and 11 p.m. Now, we uh, kind of figured out that there are 30 degrees per one hour. So if there's 10 hours between 1 and 11, how many degrees would that be? Well, let's go and figure that out. That's pretty uh, straightforward, right? So there's 10 hours between 1 p.m. and 11 p.m. So one, uh, 10 times 30 is 300 degrees, right? So there's 300 degrees between 1 and 11 p.m. But the problem is uh, not starting at 1 p.m. It's starting at 1.30 p.m., okay? So we're going to have to take off some of these degrees right here, this little amount, this 30 minutes, right? Uh, we didn't start at 1 p.m. We started at 1.30 p.m. So we're going to have to subtract away 30 minutes, and 30 minutes is the same thing as a half hour, so we're going to have to subtract away 15 degrees, right, from our uh, 300 degrees, so 300 degrees minus that half hour um, in terms of degrees, so that's 300 degrees minus 15 degrees, right, 15 degrees for a half hour gives us 285 degrees. Now, another way you could do this problem is just say, okay, same information, 30 degrees for uh, one hour. So you could just say, oh, instead of uh, 10 hours here, this is 9.5 hours times that 30, you would get the same answer. All right, so hopefully this was an entertaining and useful uh, math problem. Again, you know, when it comes to mathematics, a lot of it is uh, really the key thing is, is, is just exercising your problem-solving abilities, your problem-solving logic. That's the real value in math. Of course, there's, you know, all kinds of technical uh, reasons why you want to know mathematics. But, you know, oftentimes people will say, well, why you ever use algebra or trigonometry or cal I'll never use that in real life. Yeah, well, you know what? For most of you, you're probably right, uh, unless you're going to be an engineer. Um, but I can tell you right now, the value of learning mathematics, it helps you with your critical reasoning, your logic, your problem solving. And we live in uh, a world that is inundated with information, okay? You need to just take this raw data and reason through it to come up with conclusions and justify your conclusions. That is the real true essence of mathematics and the reason why you should study math, okay? So again, you know, uh, for those of you out there that took a different path but reasoned through this problem and got this correct, well, good job. That's the whole essence of, of mathematics, all right? So again, you know, are different ways uh, to solve various math problems. Uh, so that's why you should always attempt a math problem. Don't ever be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it exactly how he's going to do it. No, start doing whatever you can do and chip away at the problem. Oftentimes you'll be surprised, be like, well, look at me. I got this thing right. Okay, so if this video, again, was a little bit interesting and a little bit entertaining, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.